Hypothesis testing again. All right, still hypothesis testing for the difference in means, but this time the difference is we're using dependent samples. The other two sections, they were independent. So that's the very first thing we're going to do is talk about the difference between independent and dependent. And using your SAT scores is a good way to do that. You guys have to look at your SAT scores. Now you're like, okay, I'm not happy with it. And then all of a sudden this company opens up a glass and says, oh, we are offering um, an SAT prep course and we claim that we will significantly raise your SAT scores. So a bunch of you go take, pay your $800 for the course, take it, go back and retake the SAT. So now our sample is your score before you had their little SAT prep course, same people, take the SAT prep course, go back and take the SAT. So now we've got paired data before the SAT score and after for the exact same people. Where all of our samples before were trucks and utility vehicles, no overlap. We didn't have the same stuff in group one and group two. Now we're talking about one group of people, the exact same group of people after something has happened. So that's what's making them dependent. The two samples are exactly the same people or objects. So, <coughs> dependent sample. Dependent samples have to be the same. Each member in sample one is also in sample two. <coughs> So we call that paired data, a before and after. So when you're working with dependent samples, you are always going to use T values, no matter how many you have. So even if you hit the magic number 30. So because they're always T's, the population must be normal. The sample statistic, what we're testing, is going to be referred to as D bar. <coughs> Remember, X bar is average, the average of all of our X values. Here, we're looking at the difference between the before and afters and averaging them. So I'm going to give you a little formula to find D bar, and then we'll be using the calculators to actually do it. So the average difference, because we're averaging, we're going to be dividing by how many samples we have. The top part is, you take your, leave a little space here at the beginning, your X value before something, apply the treatment, i.e. go take the program, subtract your after value. So it's your one person's before value minus their after value, so you're finding the difference. And you're going to do that for every person in the sample and then add them up. And then divide by how many people there were, getting an average difference. So someone's SAT score went up by 50 points, someone's went up by 10, someone's went down by 20 and you average all of those differences together. That's what D bar is. And I'll show you how to do that on the calculator easily. Once we've got our D bar, now we've got to turn it into a T score to see where it lands on the curve. So the T score for D bar is not nearly as complicated as yesterday's formula. You take your D bar value and you subtract the claim difference, that's the mean before, minus the mean after from the claim. The book calls this mu d. Interchangeable 
symbols here. Mu before minus mu after is mu d. <coughs> and again, that's from the whole. Then you divide by the standard deviation of your differences from the sample, and I'll talk about that, over the square root of the sample size. Okay, so why do we use the second? This is from the claim. This is our sample. Why are we using the second? Oh, that's the symbol the book likes to use. I like to keep this paired up the way um, we write the claim. So that's why we use the second formula? This is mine, this is theirs. The second formula? The whole formula? This whole formula. Oh, that's to turn this into a T-score to see whether it's in the shaded or the unshaded. So we do the first one, then the second? Yes. Oh, okay. okay, now I get your question. I get it. Okay, and because these are T-scores, and we're going to be reading that T-table, our degrees of freedom, even though we've got sample one and sample two, they're the same group of people, so the sample sizes aren't going to be different, so it's just going to be n minus one. Back to that. So I've only got one example today because everything's going to be in it. There's not going to be anything tricky about it. So, But getting d bar is going to be the extra work. And the s. Oh yeah, I will, yeah. Yeah, it just won't have as many sections as the rest. What's that? One example. Um, well, it's got a big table on it, so it's going to take up space, so... Okay, are we ready? Claim by a golf club manufacturing company. Their claim, your scores will be lower if you use our clubs. Just by switching out the clubs you can increase your score. Yeah, right. But there are people that believe that. So, let's look at a set of scores. We picked, I picked eight people that were going to buy these clubs. Here's their before scores. And then I'll give you the after scores for the people. So before with the old clubs, after with the new clubs. Okay, you're best off just to write them down as I say them out loud. Instead of bob your head up and down. Is everybody ready? 89. 84, 96, 82, 74, 92, 85, 91. Okay, after scores, picked up the new clubs, went out, did it all again, here we go. 83, 83, 92, 84, 76, 91, 80, 91. Okay, we are going to test this at 5%. And um, scores are normal. And we're ready. So again, very first thing we're going to do is rewrite the claim. Before minus after is what we want to end up with. So the claim. So we're going to compare the average score before to the average score after. So it says our scores will be lower if you use our club. What sign is going to go between the before and after? After will be? Should be before and greater than after. There it is. Because they're saying the after scores are going to be lower. Make sense? Okay. So then we're going to change it to a subtraction. Mu A subtracted from both sides. So mu before minus mu after is going to be greater than zero. Now remember, the book will call this mu D greater. So when you check homework and it says the claim, it's going to say mu D is greater than zero. If you want to put that, go ahead. If you have before minus after, I'm fine with that. Same thing. Either way, the claim is the ha. 
the whole will be less than or equal to zero. So what tail test are we doing? No, no. 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 Uh, right tail. Right tail, because the ha has a greater than. We've got 5%. We're always at T scores here with dependent data. So, T table, one tail, 5%. Oh, how many DF do we have here? I had eight, so it's going to be seven. So, seven, one tail. So there's eight values here. Uh, what'd you say again? 1.895 sounds good. And that is a positive t-score because it's to the right. If I was on the left, I'd make it negative. Okay, now the, now the new stuff. We need d-bar. Okay. D-bar Finding d-bar. D-bar and s D. Okay, three step process. First, put your befores, x value before, into list one. Then put your x values for after into list two. Then, if you look at the formula, what we want to do with those scores is we want to subtract. We want the befores minus the afters. And then we want to add all of them, uh, actually average them. So the next thing we're going to do, so this is one, two. Go to list three. Tell it to do L1 minus L2. That'll do all the subtractions, the before minus afters. Then run one bar stat. on L3. So that will just do all of the averaging for us and give us the standard deviation so we don't have to do it all by hand. So when you run one bar stat, the X bar is going to be your D bar and the SX will be your SD that you're going to use in the formula. Those are the two things you're going to want off of one bar stats, the X bar and the SX. Once we've got those two things, plug and chug, then we'll either reject the hoe or fail to reject the hoe. So, practice it, grab the calculators, follow one, two, three, one bar stat, I'll wait for you. Okay. Here's your L1 list, here's your L2 list. I know I can do it, can you do it? What do you want to see? This? Right. Yeah. Help yourself to the calculators. When you're done, let's uh, share D bar and S D. See if everybody agrees. I think. I don't know. I'm gonna take out my no, three point zero seven. Yeah, okay. We're in agreement there? Yeah. On both of those? Everybody good with that? Yep, holding, holding. Got that? Everybody's happy with the try it? Okay, so now all we have to do, uh, we know where our rejection region is at. We just have to turn D bar into that T score and then see where our sample lands. So the T score for D bar, and I gave you the formula, it's D bar minus the whole difference. 
So D bar you told me was 1.625. In the whole there's a zero. The denominator is that standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. I don't have my notes out, so I won't, we'll see if a couple people get it. Mm -hmm. 1.4, 1.50. 1.50? Yep. Okay. So if that's our T-score, where is it on our graph? Failed to reject the hope. And it's neat. We're not quite enough evidence to say that that's true, that they're improving your score not quite there. Ah, uh, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. See, they were gone on like the whole hour for pictures. So, are you having homework today? Yeah, because you've got like 40 minutes of class left. So, you get to, and tomorrow I'm just going to make a, uh, tomorrow we're just going to take a little break. And I think track people are gone and a lot, but I think we could use a little review with all three sections just scrambled together, making sure you can grab everything that you need. So, but today, isn't terrible. Page. What is Wednesday? That eight three. Page three ninety five. Three through ten. You're just saying whether the two samples they give you are dependent or independent. And then the hypothesis testing. Just do two. There's no, four. No. Even. No. Now I do want to make a point on their tables because they're constricted with how far they can move horizontally. And people get confused just on the table itself, but I want to show you real quick. Like number 18. It is one table that's broken into two parts. So like the gas mileage without additive is all the top numbers. So you have nine data points, but they just chopped it into two parts because it couldn't fit horizontally. So it's one table with two rows just broken up. It's a little confusing for people. Yes. Yeah.